Hi, friend, and welcome back to Marvelous Friends, your home for all things Marvel Cinematic Universe and beyond. I'm Rhett, and today I'm going to be discussing my thoughts on how Marvel could be setting up the Weapon Plus program during Phase 4. Roll that credit. In a previous video, I broke down what I thought the Falcon and Winter Soldier series was going to look like on the Disney Plus franchise, saying how I felt that they were going to really deal with some repercussions of the Super Soldier Serum and the U.S. government's attempt to replace Captain America, especially if the rumors that John Cena will be joining the cast as Captain America U.S. agent. I then went on to make a second video where I broke down a countdown of my favorite MCU Super Soldiers, as there are quite a few characters who have been exposed to some form of super soldier serum over the course of the MCU's history. Now there was supposed to be a third part to that video, this one, and it just got unfortunately put on the back burner until this point as, as other videos came up that I felt were a little bit more important to get out sooner. However, we made it back around and so let's go ahead and finish that out with the discussion of the Weapon Plus program. Now, what prompted all of this kind of thought process on my end was a series of redacted files released by Marvel. Now, these all pointed to various characters that had relations to this Weapon Plus program, specifically pointing out Captain America, who is Weapon 1, and Wolverine, who is the very well-known Weapon 10 or Weapon X. Now, it turns out all this was leading up to the launch of a recent comic book event, this being a Captain America and Wolverine team-up series that also officially labeled the mysteriously ungiven classification of Weapon 11 to Deadpool. Now this also was part of another kind of marketing thing by Marvel Comics that was a countdown that led to a lot of speculation revolving Spider-Man, which also turned out to be an announcement for a comic book event that is coming later this fall. Unfortunately, it seems that neither of these had any direct influence regarding MCU content, but that is yet to be confirmed regarding those redacted files, as I personally see them as something that is being hinted for the films myself. Now, there is a difference, I must say, between Weapon Plus characters and just Super Soldier characters, as I have mentioned both of those throughout this video already. Now, a Weapon Plus character is someone who has went through the official U.S. government sanctioned weapons program, where they kind of try to continue the initial experiment that created Steve Rogers as Captain America during Project Rebirth or Weapon one. Now, of course, this involved a super soldier serum. A general super soldier uses a variety of different techniques and processes to recreate that original experiment as well, giving them a variety of different enhancements along the way and at various levels of success, whereas the weapons projects are usually deemed a success in the end despite maybe a few hiccups and failures along each of those stages of the process. So that is the clear definition here. There are a lot of super soldiers in the comics, but there are only a 15 at this point official weapons within that program. Many of the subjects that were put through these weapon programs in their later iterations were mutants. Again, Wolverine being the mutant that is most well known to be a part of the weapon program, and of course the weapon program was called the Weapon X program for so long because he was kind of the pinnacle of it, and it wasn't until later stories that they extended it to additional characters being a part of the Weapon Plus program. And I know what you're going to say. We don't have mutants, and it's not going to be five years until we see the X-Men, according to Feige. And I agree to that, but I hold strongly in the camp that that does not mean we won't see mutant characters or lore that is a part of the X-Men storytelling before that, as many of those aspects needs to be set up and structured within the MCU to make way for those origin stories. And that means that we can start seeing some of that stuff earlier rather than later, and the weapon program is a perfect example of that, being the fact that it actually started its origins with non-mutants, and it wasn't until later versions of it that we saw it being used on enhanced beings 
as well. So I think this would be a perfect setup and something that we can see easily really established in these Phase 4 storylines. This will not only justify the merger of Deadpool and its established franchise into the MCU whenever that does happen eventually, but also will provide us a kind of origin story for Wolverine without us having to actually see it again. With us knowing the Weapon Plus program exists and we knowing as an audience that that is what the process that Wolverine goes through, we can see a different story for him in his origins, perhaps looking more at his Alpha Flight storylines rather than his direct relationship with this organization. And we just, as an audience, know this is a thing that exists and so we don't need to see it again. Which is, again, something that Marvel likes to do. Give us the aspects of a story that we already know in a different way, plus tying everything in together like this allows them just to kind of skip this section of the storytelling when they eventually introduce Wolverine as well. However, one important aspect of that is the Super Soldier Serum itself, which we know is very limited in its availability. Of course, the exact serum and the original serum was lost with the death of the Doctor during Captain America the First Avenger, when he himself was killed. Now, to kind of have a chance at recreating the serum, they took samples of Steve Rogers' blood, taking 12 samples to be exact. Eleven of these stayed with the U.S. government, and one of them was given to Howard Stark to keep for himself. The path of the 11 samples that the government has is a little unknown and something that could definitely be explored as we dive into this weapons program. It is safe to say, though, based upon what we know, that at least some of these were re-backwards engineered to create the experiments that led to the Hulk and then the Abomination. It's also safe to say that through the connection of Hydra within the U.S. government and the shared information with the Russian government via Hydra, that this is what led to the Winter Soldier's success as well. And then, of course, because of their connections as well to Hydra, the Centipede Serum probably was derived from these re-engineered examples as well. Now, we do know what happens exactly to Howard Stark's sample. It eventually passes hands to Peggy Carter, who decides that it is best in the hands of no one, deciding to pour the sample into the river from the Brooklyn Bridge, which that doesn't seem responsible or safe either, to be quite honest. I think you could have just disposed of it more responsibly than that, Peggy. Come on. Let us now begin the tie-ins to all this within Phase 4. We know from what has been implied that Phase 4 is going to deal highly with the repercussions of the events of Endgame, mainly those timeline meddling aspects of it. And one of the major ones is that Steve Rogers decided to stay behind in the past and live out his life with Peggy. Now, because of this, there is more chances to get samples of his blood and more samples and better samples as technology progresses allows for better recreations of the super serum. And I think you see where I'm going with all of this. Basically, him staying back behind is going to result in better super soldiers in the current time of our current Phase 4 timeline. So that's why we're going to see an increase in some of these super soldiers being introduced, and we're going to see better iterations and recreations of them as well. Which this leads me to Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and if we are in fact going to be seeing John Cena in the U.S. Agent Captain America role, I definitely see this being a part of that. Now this, of course, I believe and stated in that video again, I see that this will ultimately be done in some influence of Zemo, since we know he is coming back, and that he is actually going to be in ties to Russia and based upon those Winter Soldier programs that he also has a good knowledge about. Now then, of course, this ties this all story back to Russia, and we know, again, Russia has ties to Leviathan, being a Hydra agency that works within their government and as a kind of like a secret wide-reaching organization on its own right. And we do kind of predict that we will see an origin story of sorts explored within Black Widow as she takes on Leviathan. And again, here we see that main lackey of Leviathan most likely going to be Taskmaster, who in the comics receives a version of a super serum that gives his ability to mimic any physical action or skill that he observes, which is the power of adapted muscle memory or photogenic reflexes. Again, this is two more samples of super soldiers that we're going to be getting in the MCU and most likely very early in phase four. This all then coincides with what I believe to be the major earthbound conflict and what I would like to see in phase four and that is a kind of global organization or group being the main villain behind all the action and since Hydra has been done a lot it would be nice to see another group step in and I think Leviathan could fit that role very well as it is already established in the MCU and can be explored a lot more. And again, this is comments coming from Biggie where he says that he was planning to explore things that have been on the back burner or forgotten for a while 
within the MCU in the next phase, making it set up perfect. And we know it's potentially going to have a lot of tie-ins already, so it really fits in well. And with Hydra basically being pushed out of the limelight, thanks to the efforts of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and kind of taking them out, Leviathan could see an opportunity to step in and become that superpower in the world, especially after these very promising experiments with the soul with the Super Soldier Serum, and I think Zima will play a big part of that in setting that whole process up as we learn about it from that aspect of things. With this growing threat of international super soldiers on the rise, we would definitely see the U.S. government step in and want to do something on their own as well to kind of counteract this. Enter the Weapon Plus program. I got back to it. I hope you weren't worried. It's not just about Leviathan and super soldiers in general. This is kind of collaborated by the idea that we see Infinity War with General Ross. He is definitely not happy when the war criminal labeled Avengers return to the compound to take on the threat of Thanos. And this is definitely something that I would say relates to the rest of the U.S. government as they're not a big fan of not having these heroes under their own thumb of control. This is very much so mir mirrored with General Talbot and General Hale and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. who do not like S.H.I.E.L.D. using these enhanced people as their agents without the government's exact complete control over them. And so we could definitely see them turn to this Weapon Plus program to create their own units of super soldiers to turn to instead of relying on these agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. groups and the Avengers groups who they don't necessarily trust are always 100% going to do what the U.S. government wants. I'm also going to go ahead and note here that Frank Grillo has five more movies on his contract. He, of course, if you do not remember, plays Crossbones in the MCU. Now, of course, he is dead. That is something I'm aware of. He died due to a force field that was encased around him during an explosion by Wanda. Now, we could see him pop up with these appearances as kind of like a haunting memory for Wanda, as we do know that that event affected her, but I think the use of him as a super soldier in this Weapon X program would be a lot better. Now, in the comics, Crossbones has a power set that is very similar to those who are enhanced with some form of super soldier serum, though it's not specifically said that is the case in the comic books from the research that I could find. Now, what we could see is that this is confirmed that it is what his powers come from and that he was officially a super soldier, most likely placing him in one of those super soldier sleeper cells of the Weapon 8 program. This would allow for some rounding up and some history flashback examples of the progress of the Weapon X program. I keep saying Weapon X. Weapon Plus program um, throughout the MCU, kind of setting it up for modern times, which I think would be a great use for these additional contracted appearances that Marvel could take advantage of. And this would again give us yet another super soldier and aspect of this kind of story development within Phase 4. One other aspect that we will kind of need introduced at some point to really get this ball rolling is Colonel Stryker, the man himself. Now, he is, of course, related to the weapons program, but it's not the only aspect to the character. Um, the X-Men film franchise really made him out to be the only man in charge, but that's only one aspect of it, um, but I will come back around to that in a second. He is someone that could easily be seen kind of tied into the greater MCU, introduced as an up-and-coming military personnel that really General Ross takes a liking to and the two of them being very closely linked. And then eventually General Ross giving Colonel Stryker the kind of official go-ahead with the modern iteration of the weapon program. Though, like I said, I would be interested to explore some of those other aspects of the character. Now, in the comic books, yes, he is a part of the weapons program, but eventually does leave due to the interaction of mutants, finding them to be something derived from the devil that is to ruin humanity, and he turns to become almost a religious leader of sorts, being deemed Reverend William Stryker in the comic books for the majority of his story and interaction with the X-Men. Now, this would be something really interesting to introduce in a whole new aspect of the character we have not yet seen. Again, giving us something different and taking aspects we already know and turning them into something new and exciting for us as an audience. When this eventually happens, I would see General Ross stepping back in as kind of the leader of this weapons program. He seems the most suited out of the characters that we have to really take on this role, and he seems the most likely to do so. Now, of course, it's also important to know, if you don't already know, that he is also the Red Hulk, and in this kind of storytelling of him being in charge of the weapon program, we could explore the fact that actually he has been the Red Hulk this entire time, and lead us to another Hulk film where they face off against one another. I say all this because I just really want to show how well this ties into everything that already exists in the MCU, making an aspect of storytelling that we can use without relying 
mind on mutants and begin that ball rolling to the eventual introduction of the X-Men and specifically Wolverine. Because just to have this all thrown in again at the moment when all that's introduced seems unnecessary when we could start that process now and develop some great stories with it, especially with those tie-ins to Leviathan and all of that. I think it's something that would really make sense, and then eventually we would get those tie-ins to the mutants when they are introduced, however that ends up being. Again, that is another video for another day. Finally, I think this all just ties in really well with the idea of an Earth-bound storyline. Again, referencing Faggy's comments on all of this, that we will see a division between those two sets of heroes. And having something like this and a group that's far-reaching really ties in well to all the potential storylines we could get here on the Earth-bound storylines. And I just think it would be really interesting. But I would love to know what you think about all this. Do you think that this would be a great device to be used in Phase 4 storytelling, and do you think this would be a great way to kind of go ahead and start getting the ball rolling and build that excitement to the eventual X-Men and specifically Wolverines, in this case, introduction on down the road? Let me know down in those comments. If you enjoyed this video and want to share it and like it, I would greatly appreciate it, so definitely do so. Also, make sure to subscribe and set those alerts so you catch all my future videos. But until then, I love you all 3,000. I hope you have a marvelous rest of your day. Bye, friend.